So I've been told many times that I think outside of the box, to which I reply, what's a box and why the hell would you want to think in one? So as you can see, I put my camper on the back of my rollback and I just woke up uh, out here, northeastern corner of California, out in the Modoc National Forest, right on a national forest road right here. Um, well, we camped out last night uh, and that is because we are heading down to pick up another auction purchase. Uh, how about we rewind to last night to see how we got right here and then we'll continue on down south and go get our new trailer. So we're at the pilot truck stop here in Klamath Falls, Oregon. We got a noisy reefer pulled up right here. Uh, just topped up on fuel before crossing down into California. We got 28 gallons of fuel, $102. So luckily, I've got the camper on the back. I've got all the food and snacks and drinks and stuff I need. So quiet. Oh, and of course my phone rings. Um, don't need to go outside for anything, so we can uh, keep headed south down into down into California. We have got ourselves out on some, I don't know, I think these are BLM roads, some dirt roads that branch off the highway. And it looked like on the Google Maps, if I go out this way, there's kind of a turnout right here where I can park for the night. See truck tracks on it, it looks fairly solid. Nice and level and far away from the highway and noise and all the other things we don't want to mess with. Alright. Home for the night. Alright, we've got our heater cranked up. I should have been smart and uh, if I was smart I would have uh, stopped I don't know, 10, 15 minutes back down the road and um, uh, use my phone app to turn this thing on from the truck so it'd be nice and warm in here when I got in, but I did not do that. So I ate a super late lunch today, knowing I was gonna be doing this trip, so I'm not gonna worry about dinner. It's really late, so I'm just gonna get some bed and uh, get some good rest and we'll, we'll make some breakfast in the morning and start all over. I just wanna show you this before I go like completely to bed here. Um, Check this out. Air outlet temperature, 108, almost 109 degrees. It's gonna be a comfy night. Not such a bad spot. Let's get some breakfast. Northern California is one of the most beautiful places on earth. right here uh, we got pulled in for a level one inspection just south of Susanville this is the DOT blitz week so this is their the nationwide like safety blitz where they're just going as hard as they can my truck doesn't have an inspection sticker on it so uh, they have the roadside set up pulled in we're gonna get a level one inspection and hopefully a nice fancy sticker in our window all right I'm all done with my inspection I pulled up out of the way here to fill out a log book because I got a violation for not having a log book uh, I swear I have read that non-business related use does not require a log book I, I almost swear that I have read that somewhere I've looked that up I can't find it right now of course I don't have a log book so I got a violation for uh, not having a log book uh, not an out of service not a citation just a violation uh, then I also got my, my rear license plate 
the light is not working. So that was a violation. Again, not a citation. And then the one that stopped me from getting the sticker that I wanted right there uh, was one of my hoses to my brake chambers. It was rubbing on the differential and it left just a little tiny bit of a rub mark in the side of the rubber hose. And because that rub mark is in the hose, it's a violation. It's not an out of service, it's not a citation, it's not a safety issue, they just won't give me a sticker because of that one thing, especially during Blitz Week when the focus of this Blitz Week is brake stuff. So I didn't get a sticker, I'm super bummed out and disappointed about that, I wanted one. Um, luckily no actual citations, none of this stuff needs to be signed off and all that stuff, it's just... I'm going to change that brake hose when I get back. I'm going to put a license plate light on there and I'm not going to worry about logbooks after I get home because I don't ever need them at home. And I'm going to go get this thing reinspected, and I'm going to get my damn sticker. So the officer was very nice though. Very cool dude. Very nice. Everything else on the truck passed. No problem at all. I had just missed that um, brake hose and the license plate light. So, and I was completely wrong about the, uh, um, log books I guess but oh well our destination is like right there we're we're 10 miles away if that probably 10 15 so we made it all the way there and got pulled over like 15 minutes before we're gonna be there so we are in Herlong California now home of the Sierra Weapons Depot which is uh, right over there it's a massive massive military base where they store and uh, rebuild a lot of the, the military heavy equipment and uh, so when heavy equipment gets auctioned off for surplus a lot of it comes out of here and down here in the desert out this chapped up desert road they have a storage yard that uh, the stuff that gets sold in the auction gets moved over here so you don't have to go on base to pick it up uh, and go through all that mess but in the past I have had to go on base to pick up stuff that was too big to, to move over here to the storage lot and then you gotta go through the whole security check and background screenings and all this stuff and they search you up and down and you have to leave them your phone and weapons and all that stuff that they check in at the guard shack and you get escorted in and out and all that. So this is much, much easier. You can just pull in here, and get your stuff and go without dealing with that. So we got all checked in at the office over there. We're here in the yard now. Now we just gotta wait for one of the forklift guys to come by and lead us out to uh, what we're getting. They load everybody up and make sure the right people get the right stuff and, and all those things. Uh, not much to see here. A bunch more equipment and stuff off over that way. Hopefully we're going over there and can see it. All right, we got the follow me signal. So we're gonna go, looks like over that way. So it's one of these trailers right here. Just gotta figure out which one. All right, see they got those Hemets over there, the eight wheel drive trucks. They've got six by sixes, they've got trailers, they've got blown up Hummers and, and all kind of stuff. Uh, we're gonna get this trailer out on the out of here and then get ourselves a little bit more ready to go down the road and go from there. So finally got ready to go out of the yard. We're out here on the dirt uh, entry road here. Well, let's take a look at what we got. This is an M989A1 ammunition trailer uh, it's a pinnel hitch pull trailer and what's unique about these is it's got a steering front axle instead of a pivoting front axle like most all other trailers and that's so that the belly in here where it drops down can be bigger because this axle doesn't have to swing back to turn so very goofy and with that short little tongue and a steering axle I can tell you after 10 minutes in there very tricky to back up but uh, those are air ride trailers Pinnel hitch, you know, it's all air brake, everything. It's got this big deck in here. Um, tie down points all over the place. These sides fold down to load and then you can load it with a forklift or they can come off completely 
and you don't have any sides on it and then it's just a drop deck trailer super singles on it i happen to know these tires very well because i had those tires and wheels on my last truck i had papa smurf um and actually i bought papa smurf from an auction too while we're at it but uh a guy had like seven of these in his yard and he was selling the tires and wheels off them so i bought a bunch of tires and wheels off them we unbolted them put them on my truck and i ran them it looks like the sidewalls are all like dry rotted out but that's like a it's a paint or something they put over i don't know if it's to protect it or they just rattle can the rims with them on or what but the tires themselves are actually in really good shape no dry rot no nothing like that this whole trailer actually looks like it was never used none of the tie down points have any scuff marks or anything on the paint they're all fresh paint and not a single scuff on the whole deal tires are brand new they've still got the little nubbies on them it's got a toolbox in the back right here i took a peek earlier um, there's a jack in there a bunch of other goodies and stuff in there we'll look at later maybe once we get home i had to bungee cord my light over it because these trailers are a 24 volt system my truck's a 12 volt uh, they use a 12 pin nato style electrical connector which obviously i don't have on my truck so i ordered an adapter it's not here yet when it gets here i'll be able to run the lights off of my truck they got big tie down points on the back here the only marks on this trailer are from where they picked it up with a forklift to move it around in the yard big tie down point steps in here like i said none of the tie downs have a single mark on them i don't think this thing was ever used i think it is brand new so we're gonna get uh be nice all the lights and everything work too that'd be so nice we're gonna get going uh get back out on the highway start heading north um i think you got about 400 miles to go with a trailer i've never seen before but is also brand new but is also 10 years old so i wonder if it says when inspection date uh, 2008 so this is a 2008 most likely I'll see when I get the title you have to get like a weird government title and it takes months and all that crap but 2008 it's probably set in storage ever since then and now we're gonna try to tow it 400 miles and see how it goes so let's hit the road later dudes Now we made it through the inspection, kinda. Got the trailer, got back past the inspection. Uh, the next goal for the day is just to get out of California and back into Oregon. Uh, that would be super ideal, so we're gonna work on that. We drove up the road a good way, so we're gonna check and see if anything's getting hot. Nope. Looking good. We got big backing plates on them, but. We'll see. Looking good. For comparison's sake. Ha! Ah! The truck is 15 degrees hotter at the hubs than the trailer, so I guess we ain't got to worry about that. Well, I missed the sign, but we just crossed back into Oregon. So we are out of California, back in Oregon. We are three hours and 40 minutes from home still 202 miles so halfway there better than truck stop food. This camper is the way to go. Might just leave it on the truck. All right.
right, let's uh, back on the road. That hit the spot just perfectly. Also, I was completely right. Uh, while I was sitting there eating, I actually had some time to look on my phone for once, and uh, I found the actual FMCSA regulation with all the info to back up that what I was doing for personal use is 100% legal without needing a logbook or electronic logs. The officer was incorrect. I was in the right. No violation. I can do that all I want. So I've been logging my trip back uh, just to be legal, and that is over with. No more of that. So. Uh, yeah, for personal use of a commercial motor vehicle that is not being paid in any way, blah, 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 all that stuff, uh, no logbook required. So we made it to Lapine, Oregon, about an hour from home, so uh, filling up with fuel before we get there. That way the tanks are full for whatever comes next. And then uh, also going to wash the windshield because we got hammered with bugs coming up there along Summer Lake and all that. Oh, no. It takes more than that. Let's go top it off. Okay, windshield washed-ish. Uh, tanks topped off. 71 gallons. I'm not sure what that uh, costs because I don't know what I pay for fuel here. This is on my commercial account, so uh, at the end of the month I'll get a bill and I don't know what that costs. Okay, I just did the math on that and uh, the mileage since the last time we filled up in Klamath Falls. 7.5 miles per gallon. Um, on that trip there, so that's not too bad. That's just so cool the way that thing steers. It actually follows really good. It doesn't cheat nearly as bad as I thought it would either. So now we're going to run home and then uh, we'll dig through that toolbox in the back of the trailer and see what kind of goodies they left us because uh, I peeked in there earlier. There's a bunch of stuff in there, but I didn't dig it all out. So. We'll go check that out, check this thing over one more good time, see if there's anything we need to do to it, uh, if it made the trip all right. I don't know, go from there. So I've got some good news, some good news, some more good news, and then a little bit of bad news. We are home, as you can see, it's the next day, about 10 o'clock in the morning. I got home about 6.30 last night and just pretended I didn't know what any of this stuff was. Went in the house, enjoyed some time with the girls, and... Uh, we're back out here finally. Good news number one, like I said, it, it's the whole next day. This trailer is still completely aired up. It didn't leak down at all like I thought it would, so that's really good. Um, the other good news, the officer was wrong. I was right. I dug into the regulations a little bit more, made some phone calls to confirm everything. Good news number three, a trailer and truck did completely flawless on the entire trip. Ran smooth as can be, pulled smooth as can be. Very happy with both of them. Now the bad news, this trailer's not perfect. I found I found an issue. Um, right here, that fitting has a slight, slight air leak, which means I'm gonna have to unthread this, put some new Teflon tape on there, thread it back in. I know, terrible that we would have to do something like that on a trailer we spent so much money on, but. That's the chance you take with auction stuff, so big repairs coming. Now, what we've all been waiting for, or at least I have, we're going to dig into the cubby there and see what kind of goodies uh, the military left us. Uh, since this trailer is brand new, um, we've got brand new look at, wheel chocks are still in the plastic. I don't know how I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to set you over here. more stuff in there than I thought. I thought it was just a little tiny cubby right at the back and when I peeked earlier I saw uh, the jack, the jack stand and a wheel chalk. So I thought I got a jack, a jack stand and a wheel chalk, but we got so much more stuff. So check this out. Everything is still tagged with the original tags and in the plastic bags. Brand new everything. So we got 
a bottle jack. We've got the jack cups that uh, sit under the axle, a jack plate to set it on in soft ground so it doesn't sink, a jack stand to put under the trailer support it, and then we've got the lug wrench, the bar, and this here is a lug wrench extension, which also known as a pipe and uh, wheel chalk. So that's all the stuff you need to change a tire. One thing this trailer didn't come with that it would have had originally is there's supposed to be a spare tire mounted right here. So I'm gonna have to see if I can find another one of these tires and wheels uh, to set right there so that it has a spare since it has all the stuff to change a spare. You're very loud, Mr. Airplane. So it also had uh, two big shackles in it. It had the power cord for going from the truck to the trailer, but that won't plug into my truck anyway since this is the NATO uh, 12 pin. And my truck is the seven round pin. Uh, but like I said, I have the converter coming that will make my plugs plug into this stuff and make my 12 volt system run these 24 volt lights so I don't have to change anything. So we got wheel chocks, and then check this out, we got two whole bags of ratchet straps with the snap ends for all these uh, tie down points that are around the whole trailer. Um, bags of them, all brand new, multiple bags of them, and then these are strap uh, corner protectors. They're the angle pieces that are rounded there for like putting over the edge of something sharp to run your straps across. So everything we need to tie down with this trailer is already in this trailer, which is awesome because I thought I had to go buy a whole bunch more racket strap and stuff now uh, to have stocked in this trailer. And it comes with its own. And then it comes with all its own tire change stuff. It's gotta find a tire. So I am very happy with this thing. And now comes the important part the hell did I buy it for? Well, like I told you earlier, uh, I had never seen one of these trailers before. I had bought the tires and wheels off of one for my Papa Smurf truck. And uh, when I did that, the guy, the ad was just for the tires and wheels. And I showed up and there was like seven of these trailers lined up in his yard. I was like, oh, cool. Uh, so where are those tires at? And he's like, they're on the trailers. So we actually had to unbolt the tires and wheels I wanted, the number of them that I wanted off of the trailers in his yard, leave them on blocks. I don't know what he's gonna do with the trailers. Um, and then I took the tires and wheels, put them on my truck, all good. So I got to like check them out when we were doing that and I thought they were just like the coolest trailer ever, how it's a steering axle instead of a turntable, which allows that whole belly to be much bigger because this doesn't swing back and forth. And I, I just always thought they were a really cool trailer. And I always wanted one since then. I just never had a use or a reason to buy one. So I never did, and, and to clarify, I still, don't but uh, when this popped up in the auction there's actually two of these identical side by side in that auction and uh, I watched the price this thing went so cheap that I couldn't really turn it down so now I own one so here's something I thought would be cool um, it's one of those products that I don't have time for and it's like a down the road thing but imagine this trailer take that side off too so you can you know just have the drop trailer and build like a cabin out of this thing. And there's your floor, you can do beds up there, kitchen right there where it's already up and level, whatever. But build a cabin out of it that you could like tow out wherever and set up a cabin and have like an off grid, like bug out cabin that you could hook onto and take wherever you want, whenever you want. I think that would be so freaking cool. And one day if I get like the time and you know, like, the money and, and of course the skills to to do that I might try that. I don't have any of those things right now especially the, the skills part of it but um, that would be really cool I think to do to one of these and have a mobile go anywhere in the desert woods whatever bug out cabin that you could put wherever you want whenever you want so now back to the violations I got in the inspection. They weren't citations, they weren't tickets, but they are violations and therefore that does count against your CSA score, which uh, insurance companies use CSA scores to determine rates, stuff like that, so that's not good. Uh, none of it required a reinspect. none of it was a fix-it ticket, none of that stuff. It just gives me points on my CSA score and uh, 
we don't want that. So I said, I swear I've read somewhere and knew that what I was doing, buying something personally, myself, not the business, me, hauling something personally there of my own on my truck for personal use was exempt from the logbook requirements. On the side of the road there, I didn't have time to look it up. I didn't want to argue with an officer on the side of the road, especially when he's inspecting my truck and all that stuff during Blitz Week. So once I had some time and got back home, I looked it up. FMCSA regulation 390.3F3 is for the non-commercial transportation of personal property. Exactly what I was doing. And that uh, exempts me from all of the record of duty requirements, log books, e-logs, all of that stuff, as well as the hours of service limitations. So uh, I'm not bound by the 11 hours of driving, 10 hours of rest rule, 14 hour workday, all that stuff like I would be if I was running that truck commercially. And I can do basically what I want to do with it. Now you still have to be licensed to drive the truck. The truck still has to be properly registered, insured, licensed, all of that stuff. But the hours of service regulations, they're out the window, totally exempt. The good news is now that the rest of the truck passed the inspection, I can fix those two little simple, easy things, take it down to local scales, ask them for a level one inspection, get the whole thing re-inspected, and it will count on my CSA score as a past inspection. I'll get my sticker and that'll look really good to the insurance company, the FMCSA, and then I'll have my sticker in the window. That means I'll get green lighted through most all the scales uh, after that, as long as I don't have anything goofy going on with the load or weights or anything like that. So let's uh, let's look at the, the violation I got. So if we get right up under here, where is it? Oh, right there, right there. This hose was touching the housing right here and it was chafing. So see that mark on the hose right there? That mark on the hose is what I got the violation for and why I could not get a uh, sticker. But as you can see, it's not damage to the hose. It's simply a clean spot on the hose. So all I did, I crawled right under right while he was there and zip tied it to right here so it's not touching anymore. And like I said, you wipe off the rest of it, there's nothing there. It was just a clean spot on the hose. Um, now that it's zip tied out of the way, technically that's fixed. I'll kind of reclock the positioning of that hose so it doesn't need the zip tie to not touch. And then the other one is just uh, well, license plate light not working. So I'll fix that. So I just turn on the lights and he is correct. They are not working. So in all reality, the, the license plate light is the only actual thing that was wrong with my whole truck in that commercial inspection. So that's good news because that's an easy fix. But anyway, like I said, we're back home. So I think I'm going to go get this thing parked and unhooked from the truck. Try to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Uh, get my camper unloaded, give the truck a good checking over after the trip. And then uh, maybe go relax a little bit. So thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, see you on the next one.